Hi friends, and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, a special welcome. Today's video is full of fun as we explore a variety of decoupage techniques using Mod Podge and some Dollar Tree blanks. So here are some of the projects and I'm going to take you step by step how to create them. My name is Lisa. And again, welcome to my channel at Lisa Loves Crafting. And now we'll dive in. For the first project, I'm using two different paints. Uh, you can use any soft pink that you like, but I chose to mix this folk art chalk paint in the color cashmere along with this Waverly ballet slipper pink. I wanted to get a nice soft pink to use to paint this Dollar Tree wooden heart. This is one of the Dollar Twenty Five wooden hearts and I'm using a Dollar Tree sponge brush. In between the two coats, I'm using my heat gun to dry it thoroughly. It's important to dry the first coat thoroughly before you apply the second coat and I use a sponge brush which works very well. Now you see I'm just cutting off that tag from the beaded trim. And the next thing I'm going to do after it's thoroughly dry is to apply some Mod Podge to the center. You can buy small bottles of this Mod Podge from Dollar Tree for a dollar and a quarter. And I'm using one of their sponge pouncer brushes to apply some just to the center of the heart. The center areas where I intend to put my design. After the first coat is applied, I'm going to again use that heat gun to thoroughly dry it before applying a second coat. After the second coat of Mod Podge is also thoroughly dry, I'm going to use this beautiful butterfly printed napkin and you can see it's decorated on all four quadrants. I'm just going to then separate the plies. Now, don't be fooled, I almost was. Um, there's actually three plies to this napkin, so you can see that other ply removed leaves just that nice, thin, transparent top layer that we're going to use for our design. And to detail that, I'm using a water pen. Those of you who watch my videos know that I often use a water pen to create a deckled or feathered edge around the design. That allows for a very easy tear line as the water weakens that portion of the paper. Be very careful as you remove that excess napkin to reveal just the portion of the napkin that you want to adhere. After you tear away all of that excess background uh, paper, you're ready to then apply it to the heart. Now you'll notice we allowed that Mod Podge, both surfaces of it in fact, to thoroughly dry because we're going to use a different technique that I'm going to show you today. We're going to lay that napkin right onto the center of the heart over that dried Mod Podge. Position it just as you would like it to be displayed and then take a piece of baking parchment paper, overlay it and use a small iron to iron over the surface. That will reactivate that Mod Podge glue and that will create a very smooth surface without any wrinkles or bubbles. Allow the parchment to cool. Then you'll want to carefully peel back that parchment paper and reveal your beautiful design. You see how the deckled edge allows it to blend in a little bit more seamlessly to the background. Now we want to accentuate the panels in the heart. Those grooved lines are very pretty and we want to draw that through. So to do that, I'm just using the back of the paintbrush. It's a narrow, wooden, soft, smooth end. And that works really well to impress that panel design right through the image. The next step is to apply some of the Mod Podge Extreme Glitter around the outside of the design. I'm going all over the surface of our painted wooden heart. It'll dry clear, leaving just the sparkle. If you don't have Mod Podge Extreme Glitter, you could always also just embellish it using some other glittered product. But I'm using this brush just to go around the outer perimeter there, and then I'm gonna use the sponge brush to also apply the glitter over the surface 
of the design. The pouncer brush is a little more delicate um, and will be a little bit gentler on the surface of the butterfly design. Now that the glitter layer has nicely dried, I want to show you a few other embellishments and I want to show you how I store them in Dollar Tree containers. This was a dollar and a quarter from Dollar Tree. It's a really nice heavy glass with this flexible rubber lid and this is one of the Dollar Tree new bowls and it's nice for the paint and this is just a vegetable can that I decorated with paint and a Dollar Tree wall sticker. So they're nice ways to organize your supplies. Now the next step I did was to embellish the outline of our design. And to do that, I used some of these little miniature paper flowers that came in a package from Michaels. And Michaels is good because you can often get 30 or 40% off your purchase using coupons. And it makes their uh, items a lot more affordable. And that's what I did with these. So you can see there's kind of a color gradient. They go from a soft white to um, a light pink to a darker pink. So I'm going to follow that color scheme uh, by starting with the white at the bottom and I'm just kind of outlining the tip and upper contours of that heart-shaped design and then I'm going to add the darker pinks and finally uh, the darkest ones up at the top and to do that I'm going to use this tacky glue as an adhesive. You could use Elmer's glue or any adhesive but this is just a nice all-purpose glue. So I won't bore you by showing you every flower, but just give you an idea of how easy it is just to put a drop of glue and then to adhere each of the little paper flowers. You want to kind of lay out your pattern and then go ahead and glue them all down. Now I'm just speeding up the clips to show you in a more animated way just how easy it is to outline the design with these little paper flowers. And they were so pretty, I decided to do the outermost edge in the same way as well. And you can see how pretty that looks. I also used some pink paint just to paint those beads. I also used some of the narrow washi tape just to outline that outer edge so that it would have a finished appearance when it hangs on the wall. I think this would be especially pretty hanging in a little girl's room or in your craft room. It's very sweet and very pretty for the spring and summer. For this next stunning project, just purchase two of the 8x10 Dollar Tree frames. I picked the ones that had the black frame um, that coordinated nicely with this beautiful kind of Asian inspired wallpaper sheets. I thought the birds and floral designs were just beautiful. I took apart the frame and then I cleaned the glass thoroughly. Very carefully, you want to handle it because it's very thin. All you have to do is unwrap the frames and then in the back you'll see little clips. You can simply pull back on the little clips and then disassemble your frame. You won't need that inner sheet of paper. Using the easel back cardboard as a template, simply outline the portion of the image that you want to frame. Now, both of these sheets are identical, but we're gonna create two very different looks by simply highlighting different portions of the design on the two different frames. You can see that I'm using a pen to carefully outline around that frame of the back of that easel. That will give us a perfect shape to fit into the frame. Now, once you've got it outlined, all you have to do is cut it out and you can see two sides are already cut for you. So here I am just cutting along that pen line and you want a nice crisp line. I'm using some good sharp scissors and once you get that cut out, all you have to do is frame it and carefully reinsert your nice clean glass back into the frame. Then uh, I gave it one extra wipe with a microfiber cloth and then I just inserted our design. 
it will fit perfectly back into that frame. Then all you have to do is reassemble that back easel and push your clips down and look what you have, a beautiful framed image. I turned on the light so you can see it a little better, but it's just stunning. And now we'll make the companion piece. We want to choose a different portion of the design so that the two pieces of artwork will be compatible but not identical. So for that, I chose this lower portion. I thought it was so cute the way the bird was peeking out and the other two on the floral branches is really pretty as well. So looking at the design, you just want to place it here I have it off to the side. So again, we're only gonna have to draw two lines and make our cut. The other two lines uh, are already done for us. Now we'll just cut out this other portion of the design right along that outline. It makes it so easy to get nice straight lines. And again, it will fit beautifully back into the frame and you'll see we have a very sweet pairing. I decided to add two Dollar Tree jewels that come in a package just to add a little bit of color and interest. It's entirely optional, but since I had them, I decided it would be a pretty little embellishment. As with all of these projects, there's so many different ways to make them your own. These are just designed to be inspirational, uh, showing you different techniques and ideas. But I would love to hear some of your own combinations that you choose. I would also love for you to consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. my channel, I'd like to share with you this decoupage project that's also demonstrated on my channel. It's one of my favorites and I made it using a bird's nest design napkin. Here, two Dollar Tree frames and some butterfly stickers also made a lovely pairing. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have been inspired to create some of your own DIYs. Take care and God bless.